Mask up, New Zealand. From now on, you'll be required to wear a mask at most indoor venues unless you're eating, drinking or exercising. And the way we test for COVID is about to get a major shake-up too. Political editor Jenna Lynch has the details. Masks. How do you wear yours? I've got eight of these are favourite masks. I wear them for work because I change them out every day. I feel a lot safer wearing my masks. I avoid wearing them outdoors if I don't have to. Get used to them, masks are here to stay. From February 3rd, they must be worn at food and drink businesses, events, gatherings and close proximity businesses like hairdressers. There is an exception for eating, drinking and exercising. Children will have to mask up on public transport too. As much as possible in environments where you're not distancing, just good practices to wear a mask. Workforces with mask mandates will be required to wear medical grade masks like these. But for the general public, it still doesn't matter which mask you choose, a cloth, medical grade or N95, as long as it's actually a mask. Bandana's not good enough, a scarf won't provide you protection and a t-shirt definitely won't. The founder of New Zealand N95 mask manufacturer Lanico says the government must update its advice. If the whole world was wearing P2 N95 masks correctly fitted, there would be no COVID in the world. We're not going to be recommending the use of N95s for the general public in going about your daily business, partly because they are expensive. Our whole COVID strategy needs a rethink with Omicron testing too. The government says surge capacity for regular PCR testing is now about 78,000 tests, but that surge can only be sustained seven days. Lab technician Terry Taylor says that relies on pooling test samples. We well, most certainly cannot do that when we have a lot of circulating virus in the community. We have to test every sample as an individual. It's a lot of people power. We're human beings like everyone else. We're not robots. So, meet our new robot. It unscrews the caps for testing. And enter rapid antigen tests. Currently, only asymptomatic unvaccinated travellers can get them. They must be supervised by a trained worker at a pharmacy. That's all about to change. Critical workers will soon be able to show a negative rapid antigen test to get back to work from isolation. As cases grow, we will increase the use of rapid antigen tests, albeit it being a less accurate form of testing. And News Hub can reveal the Ministry has already told GPs, pharmacies and urgent care clinics to get their orders in. To order five per frontline staff member plus a 10% contingency for staff to test themselves unsupervised. This will enable the critical workforces to remain at work. Next up, order enough to provide supervised tests for those who cannot source or use them themselves for their elderly, high needs, Māori, Pacifica and high deprivation patients. Because the testing strategy, due to be announced tomorrow, will likely include the use of unsupervised rapid antigen tests by the public. Well, as soon as they get here, the government has ordered 80 million. What is a, a very, very competitive global market, and we have a lot on order. The challenge is, and what we are working with the suppliers on, is getting confirmation of delivery. Here's hoping they arrive before the Omicron tidal wave. Well, kia ora, Jenna. So how soon are these extra tests going to arrive? Yeah, they're expecting the first delivery, about 15 million of them by the end of February, but that's still five weeks away and it does feel like that might be a little too late. Timing is crucial when we're in a race against Omicron. We have a very short window available to get our booster numbers up to combat this strain, but the majority of our population isn't yet due for a booster. So these extra government precautions, like that monster mask mandate, are designed to buy us as much time as possible to boost. Political editor General Lynch, Tenakwe.